Hello guys, today's session is depend upon something called as arrays. See, when you talk about arrays in lots of programming languages like C, C++, Java or C Sharp, we always use arrays in some other way. Now what exactly array means? See, before starting with array, let's go for this example. Let's suppose if you take a variable int i, normally this int i variable can store lots of values. It can store integer values from mass some number to plus some number. Now if you take a second variable j, it will again take some values. If you can say k, it will again take some value. Now a i is a different variable, j is different variable, k is different variable. Let's suppose I am saving a marks of a student in i as 50. I am saving a marks in j as 60. I am saving a marks in k as 70. Normally if you can see this is 50 in saved in i, 60 which is saved in j and 70 which is saved in k. Now let's imagine this thing as a normal bus. See when you go for a bus, let's suppose this is your bus. Okay, This is one bus. This is second bus and this is your third bus, a normal uh, traveling bus. Now when we talk about this bus, this bus name is I. This bus name is J. This bus name is K. Every bus has different value. I has 50 value, J has 60 value and K has 70 value. These are totally a different bus which stores a number called as 50. 60, 70, somewhat integer values. Now the problem is when I know this all bus are of same type, integer. You know I can create a train out of it. Instead of calling a bus, we can call it as a bogey. A bogey of a train. Like this is one bogey. This is my connected second bogey. This is my connected third bogey. Now I have a train with three bogeys. A bogey I, a bogey J, and a bogey K, or a, a you know a train ka, train bogies. Now when I say a train, when I say a bus, every bus is individual bus. It's I bus, it's J bus, it is K bus. If I create a train, I can create a train of I. This whole train is called as I, having different different bogies. This is bogey zero. This is bogey one. This is bogey two. Because when you, when you talk about bogey number, you have to give an individual bogey number. This is bogey number 0, bogey number 1, bogey number 2. Again, the whole train is called as I now. This is your I. Now this bogey 0 will save 50. This bogey J will save uh, 1, say will say uh, uh, 60. This bogey 2 will save 70. Again, here we have three different variables. Here we just have one variable i which is able to save all the three values having different index number. This is bogey number is also called as index number. So whenever you talk about arrays, arrays are nothing but collection of elements. The only condition is there should be similar type of elements. It should be int throughout int. It should be float throughout float. It can be character throughout character. That means you have to maintain the uh, elements. This example, yeah, here you have int element, int element, int element. When I collect all this int element, I got an array of int named as i. And if you want to represent this int, if you want to create this uh, array in C, you can create this array using type. After type, you have to define the variable and you have to say the size. This will define the size of your train or size of your array. Here we are taking only 3. So the size of the array is 3. If I want to say I want to store 50 in 0th location, I can use it this way. It's i of 0, I am saving a value 50. In i of 1, I am saving a value of 60. In i of 2, I am saving a value 70. That means it's your i of 0, 50 i of 1, 60, i of 2, 70. This is how you can use arrays. See, instead of using three different variables, I have used only one variable with three locations. It's 50, 60, 70, 50 in zeroth location, 60 in first location, and 70 in second location. 
This is index number of arrays. See, normally this array can be of any size. It can be of 10, it can be of 100, it can be of 1000 also. It depends upon variable how much you want. Again, it depends upon which type of programming language you are going with. You can go for C also, you can go for C++ also, you can go for Java also. Everywhere arrays are same. The only thing changes is the type of declaration, is the type of making it. When you go for Java, Java treats everything as object. So if you are creating an array in Java, you have to create object of array. But in C, everything is primitive. So if you have to create an array in C, you have to create a primitive data type as int, uh, variable name and size of it. It's 3. Now let's take a proper example of array. Let's suppose I am uh, I'm dealing with a C, C program as main function, a normal main function. Curly was open, curly was close. Now here, if I define a variable int i, and I want this variable i should accommodate at least 5 values. Okay, it will have 5 values. I want to assign 5 values in this way. If I am having a, I'm having a train with number of bogies as 5 bogies. So this will be having 5 bogies. I hope it's right. Yeah, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The numbering of this bogie will start with 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. That means the size of and the maximum size of an array is 5 and the maximum index number is 4 because it's starting with 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now if I want to store values, you know it's very easy to store value. It can be in this way. It's i of 0, I want to store i of 0 by value 1. So it's 1. I want to store i of 1 by value 2. So it's i of 1 equal to 2. I want your 3, I want your 4 and 5. So it's i of 2 is 3. i of 3 is 4. i of 4 is 5. You know, if you say this code, it's normally very easy to say this code. It's actually you are assigning values to individual blocks. Again, if you are taking 5 variables because you require 5 locations, you can take it. It's i, comma j, comma k, comma l, comma m. You have to take five variables. Instead of that, we are taking only one variable. In this one variable, you can store at least five data. Now the problem is you are doing the assignments repeatedly. And as you know, if you do something repeatedly, you can go for loops. And the better loop here is you can go for for loop. Because in for loop, if you know the starting loop value, if you know the ending value, you can go for for loops. So instead of doing all these things, you know, we can go for an alternate code here. See, we have to use a for loop. Again, let's go for a for loop of j. j will start with 1. j less than equal to, because we are using 5 values, so 5. And j plus plus. Again, whenever you work with uh, arrays, arrays always start with 0. So, starting with 1 is not a good task. You have to start with 0. So, j equal to should be 0. And j should end before 5. So you have to remove your equal to. So it will start with 0. It will end at 4 because you have written less than 5. Now what you have to do? You have to assign value like if you are assigning i of 0, i of 1, i of 2, i of 3, i of 4. Instead of writing this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can write j. So it's i of j is equal to. Now if your value, if your location is 0, you are assigning 1. 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4 and 4, 5. That means an uh, increment of the jth value. So you can go in this way also. It's j plus 1. That means whichever the j's value is, if j is 0, it will store 1. If j is 1, it will store, it will store 2. That means you have an array of 5 elements which having value from 1 to 5. Then you have to close it. That's it. The whole code is converted into this value. Therefore, normally when you use arrays, it is better to go for loops when you are assigning some values. And arrays is normally used when you, when you require a high amount of elements of same type to be stored in a single variable. Again, sometimes we don't prefer to go for arrays because, see, if you know the number of variables, you can go for arrays. If you don't know the number of variables, how much you require, like the length. Let's, uh, example, when you, when you want to store the, number of, the marks of students, again, 
your students can be 10, your students can be 15. But if you give a size of 15, you have to accommodate all the 15. If 16 person come, it will create problem because your array size is 15. Second problem, if you have 15 and you have student, uh, 10 students only, you will, you know, you are unwantedly reserving that 5 locations and each location will carry in it 2 bytes. So 2 into 5 locations is vested, that is 10 bytes are vested. So if you know the number of size uh, or if you know the uh, number of uh, blocks, if you know the number of variables, you can go for arrays. So to solve this problem in Java, you have, you know, uh, if, you, if you want a variable length array, in Java, it provides you a variable length array, something called as array list. If you don't, if you are not familiar with Java, let it be. Your concentration is only on arrays. So when you talk about arrays, is uh, instead of having individual bus, you can go for a train with only one variable i, or you can take any variable name. Every bogey has its number starting with index number with zero and will be ending by n minus one. If you have n location, it's n minus one location. Okay. So now this is single dimensional array. This is something like an array. What if if you want to go for a table? Let's suppose I want in this way. I have two rows and two columns. This is my row 1, row 2, column 1, column 2. You can go for this by creating a two dimensional array. This, is, this was one dimensional, this is two dimensional. That means you have to define a variable i. This time it's not one dimensional, it is two dimensional. One is two, second is two and semicolon. The same way you are using. But the problem is this is your i and this is your j. 1, 2 belongs to i, 1, 2 belongs to j. Or in some way let's suppose change the variable name as a. It's for better use because whenever you go for row count it always go for i. Whenever you go for column count it goes with j. Let's suppose I want to store something in this variable. Let's suppose I want to save 5. If I want to save 5 here, again when you go for arrays, it's not 1, 2. It goes from 0 to 1. So it will be 0th location, it will be 1 location, it will be 0th location, it will be 1 location. So I start with 0 and 1, J start with 0 and here we have 1. Now if I want to store something in this block, it is 0 and 0. So it is A of 0 and 0, it will be 5. If I have to save here 6, it's A of, first is row number, row number is 0, column number is 1. So 1 equal to 6. If I have to store something here as 8, so it's 1 because it is second row and first column, it's 0 equal to 8. If it is this location I want to store here 12, it's A of, uh, it's 1 and 1, it's 12. You know, this is how you can store values in array. Again, if you want to go for a better way, if you want to use for loop, you can do it. It's very simple. If you want to use for loop, again, you have to take two for loop. One for row count, second is for column count. Again, you have to go for nested loop, there's a different task. But the thing is, if you are creating a single row, it's one dimensional array. If you are going for tables, Multiple rows you can go for two dimensional array. This is two rows, two columns. If I write here three, it's two rows, three columns. If I write here four, it's four rows, three columns. This is how you can create two dimensional array. In fact, uh, most of them uses three dimensional array also. If you want something in cubic way, because this is row, this is table. If you want a cube, you can go for three dimensional array. Right? Example two. Like I have 4 row at front side, 3 bottom and 2 back side. So you can also go for cubes. This is what when you talk about array it's exactly mean. Right? Normally uh, when you go for advanced programming we certainly use arrays in multiple things like when you go for uh, if you want to create a table like 2 to the 4, 2 to the 6 you can go for arrays. If you want to store same element, same type elements in number of uh, in same block you can go for arrays. And this is what, when I say, I is all about. Thank you. That's it. That's it.